The next Nissan GTR will not be internal combustion. It will either be a hybrid or a full EV. Here's what we know. So, so far with the new GTR, um, the R36 is what that um, chassis code is going to be. I'm not sure if you know about the old GTR type of thing, but it usually go, it starts with an R and then it goes with the, the chassis code on the whole de, the generation type of thing. Um, so you can think of it as, you know, R32, R33, R34 is the sexy one everybody knows about. The R35 is the one that you've seen. And now the new one is going to be the R36. So anyways, so this gets kind of tricky because Nissan has publicly said, and I'll put the quote right here, um, that they will no longer be putting really any R&D into internal combustion engines, which is tricky. That's tricky because, you know, of course, with the whole push for um, EVs and hybrids and everything like that, with their new R36 they're going to have coming out, they're not going to keep that um, that same power plant they're using before with that, uh, that V6 twin turbo. Before that, they were doing that straight six twin turbo, the RB26. Um, so kind of changing things up between the R34 and R35. However, with this new one coming out and them saying, hey, we're no longer going to put R&D into gasoline powered engines, they haven't really said what they're going to do yet for the R36, but we can infer that it's going to be at least a hybrid, if not a full electric. And I say that because they have, they've recently announced um, a concept for what they call the Hyperforce. And it's going to have, you know, like 1300 horsepower, and it's going to be electric, all wheel drive, blah, blah, blah. you know, basically that they're, they're Basically, everybody, when they when they make a new concept, it's going to be, you know, the fastest thing in the world, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But this one looks pretty good, looks pretty promising, and I'm just, I'm confused on if they're going to have either a full EV or if it's going to be a hybrid. Because like they said, they're not going to put any more technology into gasoline-powered engines. That's just how it's going to be. So, if they do put it into, if they do put the EV you know, drivetrain into that hyperforce, it's going to be heavy. Um, and the R35 isn't the lightest car as it is. It's already a chunker. So if they switch it over and go full EV, that thing's going to be heavy. And I feel like that kind of ruins the whole idea behind it because it is kind of a grand touring racer car, you know, GTR, Gran Turismo racing. So part of that Gran Turismo part is going to be the ability to kind of drive around and put some miles on it. That's what Grand Touring cars are supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be driving around over relatively longish miles in comfort with tons of power. That's kind of how it is. Think, um, think Ferrari when it comes to, to, to touring cars, Grand Touring cars. Okay. But then if you have an electric vehicle that doesn't get a lot of range, does that kind of defeat the purpose of a touring car? I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. And I'm not a GTR hater by any means, and I'm not a GTR fanboy. I did, I loved the R34 GTR Skyline because I grew up, you know, playing PlayStation. And between that and the Suzuki Escudo, I love both of those cars. But... I feel like they've been kind of, this, this might be too big of a step, I guess. <clears throat> like I said, I'm not a big fanboy, so I don't really, it, it's not going to change my life at all. If they do make this car completely different, if they do make it a whole different experience, if they change it from, uh, you know, a grand touring car into, you know, a full heavy, let's see, it's, it's going to be heavy if it's going to be EV, but a race car, a track prepped race car that's going to be uncomfortable to drive. I mean, it'll be cool to kind of for them to show what they can do. It'll still be their, their halo car, but I think it's going to kind of lose its sense 
than what it actually is. And I wonder if they're doing that with the Hyperforce name to kind of separate it out and then they're going to make a little more accessible one as that um, as that newer GTR, the R36. I hope that's what happens because the new Hyperforce, as you can see on the lines, they are very GTR-ish, very Skyline-ish. And I hope it doesn't take over completely because like I said, that's going to kind of change what it is. That'll change the whole, whole idea behind it, which maybe I'm old fashioned. Maybe that needs to happen um, as it progresses, but I feel like it's just too far of a departure. Not quite the departure that, that uh, Mustang had with their Mach-E. That's totally different. Um, that's a whole different car that just happened to have the Mustang badge on it. That's a, that's a talk for a different day. But basically all we know so far is, number one, Nissan has said they're going to stop putting R&D into gasoline-powered engines, okay? Which is big because Nissan usually keeps their same their same car, their same body style, their same engine in their cars for a longer time frame, about 15 years is usually about how long Nissan does it. And they had all the time in the world to make little adjustments to their engines. And now for them to totally just cut it off, they're either going to have to keep that engine and put it in a new body or wipe the slate clean and do something else. And I feel like that is going to be what they're going to do with the new R36. They're just going to say, okay, you know, twin turbo V6, you're gone. Here's the new, here's the new solid state battery EV that's going to be super fast and wonderful and great, but it's going to be an EV. And like I said, I might just be old. This is kind of more of a rant than anything. I might just be getting old, but I feel like some cars you need to leave, leave alone. I'm, I'm all for progress, but like with the Mustang, they've kind of ruined ruined that with the Mach-E. Uh, Mitsubishi ruined their Eclipse with the Eclipse Cross. Ford, once again, ruined their Maverick. It used to be kind of a cool little little muscle car-esque type thing, and now it's a little truck. I just feel like call it anything else. Call it anything else, and it'll be fine, and then just make it R36 for most people. It, it, it's still going to be, the R35 is still $107,000. So it'll still be a very expensive car. But just do an R36, update a car, make it more accessible, and then make this crazy hyper, hyper force, 1300 horsepower car, you know, for some for something else, for some other purpose. But what do you guys think? What do you think about it? Because I really don't know how I feel. Like I said, I'm not necessarily a GTR fanboy. It used to be my favorite car until I saw one in real life, and it kind of, knocked down a few pegs that'll be a different video um but i feel like it being you know one of the top three jdm royalty cars just leave it alone i don't know <laughs> i'm old i'm old so you guys tell me what you think is it okay is it time to move on in the future make everything ev make everything hybrid don't you know don't worry about turbos and internal combustion engines just switch it all over batteries and hybrids let me know and let me know what your age is when you comment let me know what your age is so i can kind of see if it's going to be something where the younger guys are going to say yeah go ev because that's the future or if you're going to have the older guys say no no keep ev out of, you, out of it let me know i'm interested to see what you think okay bye